Hello and welcome to this tutorial video on using the Band in the Box DAW plugin with Traction Waveform. This video will teach you the basics of using the plugin. Before we start, we need to make sure that the DAW has found the Band in the Box plugin. To do that, click on the Settings button in the top left, then click on the Plugin tab. Now we need to scan for plugins, so click on the Scanning for Plugins button, then click on either Scan for New or Updated VST3 plugins or scan for newer updated audio unit plugins. I'll use VST3 for this example. This should automatically fill in the correct location as it's the default in macOS, but please make sure that slash library slash audio slash plugins slash VST3 is showing in this list. Now click scan and waveform should find the plugin automatically. If you can't see the Band in the Box plugin in the list at this point, then most likely you need to run the setup program for Band in the Box, as the plugin is automatically installed with Band in the Box. Now once the plugin has been found by Waveform, let's go back to the welcome screen. We'll start by clicking New Project, then enter a name and click Create Project. This will bring you to the main screen. From here, we need to add the plugin to the session. To do that, click on Plugins in the sidebar here. Then drag the Band in the Box plugin down to where it says Drop Master Plugins here. This will bring up the Band in the Box plugin. If this is your very first time using it, there are a few setup steps we'll need to cover. First, click on the Preferences button to open the plugin preferences, then click on Folder Locations. If all of the folder locations are listed in blue text, then you're good to go. However, if they're in red text, we need to set up the correct location. The easiest way to do that is to click on the Find Folders button. This will try to automatically locate the Band in the Box and Content folders and is usually the most successful. Though if you've installed Band in the Box into a custom location, then you may need to manually select the folders. If that's the case, click on each select button in turn, then navigate to your install locations and click Open. Once you've done that with all of the locations for Band in the Box, real tracks, real drums, and the saved tracks, then you're ready to go. While we're here though, let's explore some of the other preferences. The general tab covers language selection, as well as the defaults for new session styles and some of the controls. The rendering tab covers how the plugin renders your tracks. For example, you can have your tracks rendered flat, which removes any additional EQ, Dry, which removes any additional reverb. Center pan, which removes any left-right panning. Normalize, which maximizes the volume of each track individually, and so on. These first few options will change how your song sounds if you've started the song in the main Band in a Box app. However, this can be beneficial, as when mixing in a DAW, it can be better to start with a blank slate, so to speak, and add any EQ, reverb, panning, and volume automation from the DAW. Now lastly, the DAW Settings tab controls how the plugin responds to the DAW and vice versa. These are somewhat more advanced controls and are typically best left at their default state. However, it's good to familiarize yourself with these options just in case. If you want to find out what each of these options does, or any other option in the plugin, simply hover your mouse over top of them, and a hint will pop up. Now that we've set up the folder locations and explored the preferences, it's time to make some noise. If you've already written a song in the main Band in a Box app, then we can open it by going to File, Open, then find the file that you've saved. I have my songs in my music folder for easy access, however you can open or save files anywhere you want. To open up your song file, simply double click it. If you're starting a song from scratch, you'll see here that the chord chart and the tracks are empty. So let's go ahead and type in a few chords. Once you've done that, you can set how long your song will be, as well as how many choruses or repeats it will have. I'm just going to create eight bars and one chorus which will be just one repeat of the chord chart here. You can also choose whether or not to have a lead-in or an ending in your song from these two checkboxes here. Next, we need to choose a song style. To do that, click anywhere on the current style name to open the style picker. If this is your first time using the plugin or opening the style picker, 
then you should rebuild the style list first. Click on the Rebuild button at the bottom here, and then choose the Fast Rebuild option and click Yes. This will take 30 seconds or so to build a complete list of the installed Band in a Box styles, as well as your reel tracks, drums, and other content. Once that's done, we can choose a style from the list. You can simply scroll up and down through the list to find what you like. However, there are thousands of styles available, so that can take some time. There are some search options at the top of this window that can help narrow things down. For example, if you know the genre of song that you're trying to write, say we're doing a Latin song, or if you know the tempo that you want to use, you can specify that here. Or right above these, you can type anything you want in the filter box. If at any point you want to clear these options and see the full list again, simply click on this clear button. You can listen to a demo of each style by double clicking on it, and you can control it by the play and stop buttons here. Or if you want to load up the demo song, you can click on this load song demo button. But be aware that if you've already typed in your own chords, they'll be lost if you open another file. Either way, once you've found the style you want, click OK to go back to the main screen of the plugin. You'll see that it's now loaded the instruments from the style in the track table in the middle of the window. If you want to add any more instruments at this point, you can do so by right-clicking or two-finger clicking on any of the empty tracks and choose any of the options from here. You can add in an extra reel track, MIDI super track, MIDI soloist, loops, user tracks, or reel drums. Or of course you can add in your own wave or MIDI file. There are multiple pages of tracks available here, so if you don't have enough space in this first page, you can go to the next page to see the uh, extra utility tracks. One more thing to add before moving on is that the drums will give you a stereo mix by default. In most cases this is fine, as we've done the mixing for you, however if you wish to mix the drums yourself, it's possible to get drum stems for many of the real drum tracks. This means you can have separate audio tracks for each microphone that was used when recording the drums. To load drum stems for your song, right-click on the drums track and go to Select Real Drums. Now if you can see this section with the different stem names at the bottom of the window, then you can simply check the All Stems checkbox or you can select each stem separately. Now if you can't see this section at first, that means the current reel drum does not have stems available. It's possible to select different reel drums for your song though. The best way to choose one with stems is to enable this checkbox for Show Reel Drums with Stems. And to help narrow down an appropriate reel drum, I'm going to uncheck these other two boxes, Show If Feel Does Not Match, and show if tempo is out of range. This way it only shows real drums with the same feel and tempo range. As before, you can simply double click on each one to hear a demo. Then make sure that the stems you want are selected and click OK. This will add the drum stems into the utility tracks section of the plugin. Now you may notice the tempo indicator is flashing at you. This indicates that your DAW is set to a different tempo than the plugin so we'll need to make them match. To set the tempo in the plugin to the tempo in your DAW, simply click on the flashing blue button to automatically change the tempo in the plugin. Or if the plugin is already set to your desired tempo, then click down here in the DAW to set the BPM. If your song is using a different time signature than your DAW, then you'll also have to change that by clicking here and changing your time signature. Now we're ready to generate the song. Simply click the Generate button at the top and the plugin will start generating all of the instruments for your song. Once it's finished, you can play your song to hear how it sounds. If it's not quite right, you can always go back to the Style Picker to choose a different style, or you can add or change instruments if you like, and then click Generate again to have the plugin create new tracks for you. When you're trying out different tracks and styles, the play and stop buttons and the progress bar at the top here will come in handy. Plus you can double click any bar in the chord sheet to start at that point. Always remember, if you make any changes to the chord sheet, change style, or add or change any tracks, 
you'll need to click the Generate button again to have the plugin build new tracks for you. Now before I continue, I'm going to add another track here. So I'm going to select a real track. Now from here, similar to the Style Picker, you can search here. I'm going to add this boss a saxophone to this song. You can double click it again to hear how it sounds as a demo, or use these play, stop, and progress buttons to listen to them. When you've chosen the instrument you want, simply click OK. Now to generate that, again we have to click on the generate button. Now once you've got your song sounding how you want it to sound, we can drag the tracks into the DAW. Do so by dragging the wave or MIDI buttons here into the DAW. And if it asks to make a copy, you'll want to click make a copy. For convenience, you can also drag the blue all button to drag all of your tracks at once. It will ask if you want them all on one track or on separate tracks. And for best results, you should choose separate tracks. Now, once your tracks are dragged into your DAW, you can work on them just like any other recording. You can chop, splice, delete, or edit to your heart's content. As this video focuses on using the Band in a Box plugin, the rest is up to you. And that concludes this tutorial video. If you have any questions or trouble, you should check out our support page for the latest information such as instruction manuals, FAQs, or if you're really stuck, you can contact our technical support team using the contact information on that page. In addition, we have a very active user forum which is free to join, and will get you in contact with thousands of Band in the Box users around the world who can share their tips and tricks. Anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, have fun!